it is a great joy to welcome you to Father Barney Inspirations. And please remember to subscribe to this channel for interesting updates and also to review what we have done in the past. I want to share the story of the blind man who saw Jesus with you. Imagine yourself in a room that is completely dark without the least flicker of light. Imagine being in that room for years, constantly grouping in the dark to navigate your way to find food or other needs. If you can entertain such imagination, then you'll be close to sharing the experience of people who are visually challenged or blind. Most people consider blindness as the worst among the other impairments of our human experience. But of course, the curiosity that goes with sin is very powerful as it gives us visual information on how to act or react to our external stimulus. So which will you prefer if you just have one option, blindness or deafness? My dear friends, the Gospel of Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52 gives us an interesting narrative about a blind man called Bartimaeus. Earlier in the same Gospel, in Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 to 25, people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged him to heal him. We could recall that Jesus took the man outside the village and healed him after rubbing saliva on his eyes and touching them twice. The story of the blind Bartimaeus comes with some peculiarities. He was sitting by the roadside begging as Jesus was making his way to Jerusalem through Jericho. Suddenly, he could hear a crowd approaching and his inquiry confirmed that Jesus was passing and instantly he acted in a way that will leave us with so many lessons. Significantly, the first thing that Bartimaeus did was to call upon the name of the Lord, which is a biblical principle. The prophet Joel and St. Paul both affirm that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, as we can see in Joel chapter 2 verse 32 and Romans 10 13. Furthermore, he chooses to use the name that identifies the mission of Christ. So he says, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Son of David is the functional description of the Messiah or anointed one. So Bartimaeus was saying, Christ the Savior, have pity on me. The crowd urged Bartimaeus to be silent. But the narrative says that he shouted even more. There is a quick lesson here. Do not allow anyone or anything to stop you from calling upon the name of the Lord. Do not stop. Just keep calling. St. Paul will advise us in Galatians 6, 9 not to grow weary in well-doing and we shall reap the fruit in due season. My dear friends, the persistence of Bartimaeus in calling upon Jesus made him to stop and to invite him over. Now. The crowd that was trying to hush him to be silent turned around to encourage him to meet the Lord. Notice that people will change their views when your story changes. So do not be worried about it. It is human. Now to respond to the invitation of the Lord, Bartimaeus had first to cast aside his cloak. Here, my dear friends, the cloak represents all the things that constitute our comfort zones. It could be a rank or a position or any material platform. For us to encounter the Lord, we must step away from our comfort zone. And as I will tell people, your comfort zone may not be your conquer zone. Approaching the Lord, he asked Bartimaeus to state clearly what he wanted. And he said, I want to see. His answer confirms the fact that he was not seeking for arms because he was also a beggar besides being blind. Here we learn that it is important for us to be very precise and specific when we want to make requests from the Lord. He wanted a transformation of his situation, not just arms. And we can guess what happened next. He got his sight back and he followed Jesus along the way. But Timaeus could have been blind, but he saw Jesus before that historic meeting that restored his sight. How did this happen? It was by his steadfast faith. He only needed to hear that Jesus was passing that way and everything changed for him. St. Paul would tell us that faith comes by hearing as we see in Romans 
10 17 and in another place St. Paul says we walk by faith and not by sight as we can see in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 my dear friends there will be the need for us to pay attention to the fundamentals of divine restoration in the narrative if we care to have them happen in our lives they include first hearing second believing third confessing and then receiving saint paul will say the word is near to you on your lips and in your heart if you confess with your lips that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved for one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and is saved as we see in romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10. going back to our point of departure the blind Bartimaeus saw jesus christ with the eye of faith though he physically he could not see him on the contrary the hushing crowd showed that they were blind spiritually because they could not see what the blind man saw and that is the son of David passing by. Bartimaeus was not the only blind man on that street that day, but he was the only one that identified the son of David and he was very merciful to him and restored his sight. My dear friends, did you know that Jesus is still passing by every day through our lives? Just like that journey from Jericho to Jerusalem, we might be like Bartimaeus sitting by the roadside of life, waiting for help to come to us. But will you recognize help when help shows up in the presence of Jesus Christ through the words and through the sacraments we participate in every day? Are you able to recognize the Lord in the breaking of the bread? Are you able to recognize the Lord in the words that you hear? And will you be able to say, Lord Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me, just like Bartimaeus? There will be the need for you to challenge your faith today. You have to rise up from your comfort zone, step out to encounter the Lord, so that you can have that impartation for transformation, so that you can come out from your spiritual blindness in order to receive new sight and new life. To see the Lord the way He is, today might be the day you need to come out and encounter the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we often look but we don't see because we do not see with the eye of faith. We humbly beg you to assist us to see again, not by sight, but by faith, so as to receive your unfailing liberation and transformation. We make our prayers to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.